Hey everybody, it's Uncle John from Your Story Hour, and I'm back to bring you another chapter from Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo, and Still Mo by the author Sam Campbell. Today's chapter is chapter number 15, and it's entitled, Winter Ways and Wounds. The squints, however many of them there were remaining, found their first winter in the world to be a dandy. Snows came early and stayed late. The white feathers coming down from the sky heaped up in drifts that were small hills. Blizzards howled through the north woods. The thermometer settled well below zero and stayed there most of the time. Roads were blocked and even the main highways of the region, usually kept open by great plows, were impassable at times. Deep under this feather bed of snow, many of our forest friends swept, slept the winter away. Link, the canny woodchuck, now would be curled in a tight ball in a specially prepared chamber of her underground home, dreaming of a heaven made of carrots and cabbage. Chipmunks were sealed in their caves. Occasionally, though rarely, a place would be found where a little plume of vapor came from a sort of chimney in a great drift. Beneath here would slumber the bear, his alarm clock set for the first days of spring. Deer would be having difficulty with the deep snows. It would be hard for them to move about in search of food. They would yard up in small groups, selecting valleys that where they would remain for the winter. Their tiny hooves would pound the snow down as they moved about, and if the food of their narrow home gave out, they would be in a sad or even tragic position. We often imagined what Stilmo, Meanie, and Mo would be doing, though we did not get back to see them. Our winter went to struggling with the difficult wartime transportation problems bringing to people our message from nature. We found the fine people of the city tired by their efforts, tired but determined. The war job must and would be done. Americans who had such a distaste for war must call forth even greater determination than people who had known less freedom the hour of beauty we might bring them in films of forest, fields, lakes, streams, mountains, dawn, sunsets, was rest and refreshment to them. For the time, they could forget the stern and gruesome things they must manufacture to meet the needs of the men at the front. Here they were reminded of the world of nature, the world that God had made, that knew no war but lived on in its unbroken routine, and here was a world to which they could return when the epidemic of fighting was done. With this beauty in mind, they could turn again to their temporary duties, better able to carry on. We felt certain we could picture what was going on at our forest home. The three squints would not be out every day. During extreme cold, they would stay in their protecting nests. Still Mo in the hollow of his white cedar, Mo in the big hole in the white pine, Meanie in his hemlock. They would curl tightly in the cedar shreds, their heads and noses wrapped up in their tails, tucked their tiny feet in the middle of themselves, and let the winter rage. When things were milder, they would come out. The snows would record their trails as they went from tree to tree. What a brilliant contrast would be their flaming red coats to the white that prevailed over the wood north woodland. But many things went on at the island that we didn't know about until later. Stilmo, for instance, had taken to living in Duke's tent house. Since he didn't know how to use the door his human friends used, he chewed a hole, to his liking, right through the roof. The place made a fine dining room during this severe weather. Into it he carried scores and scores of cones from red and white pine trees. From these he extracted and ate the seeds, dropping the other portions to the floor. A deposit of several bushels of this debris accumulated. Just to play safe, he chewed several other doors through the canvas, one at a new point in the roof, one in the wall at the back of the tent, and one in the side. The fact that snow could get in as well as he could probably did not occur to him, or maybe he just didn't care. It may be that he had Meanie and Mo into lunch occasionally. At least, there were enough pinecone crumbs on that floor to have been the work of half a dozen squirrels. Salt or Pepper, or both, likely visited the island during the winter. 
Whoever it was from the porcupine clan peeled much of the bark off Moe's big white pine and ate the coverings of several smaller trees for good measure. Only once we heard from Duke. It was a long letter, talking mostly of home things, saying little about his own experiences. But some way it bore the echo of events filled with dangers and difficulties. There was the feel of jungle fighting, of soggy swamps that must be traversed in darkness, with desperate enemies lurking on every side. There were the boom of cannon and the rattle of machine guns and the flash of bayonets, not in the things he said, but in what he left unsaid. If for no other reason, I am grateful for this experience that it gives me a better sense of values, Duke said and I feel sure he was writing in a foxhole. The boys are finding they do not reach out for things that they thought were so important at one time. It is not the glittering and gaudy things they yearn for now, not great possessions or possessions. Here, where one owns very little and maybe does not own that for long, he sees that material things are not first in value. It is what the heart holds that we prize. Like the man rushing from a burning house, grasping the things he really values most, we hold back that which is highest in our love, and we find that it is the love of family and friends, the quiet peace of home and fireside, the simple everyday experiences of normal living that we want. I hope this sanity stays with me when I return, for at this moment I know I am thinking clearly and truly. Weeks passed. Then, from Duke's parents, came a message to us that made the winter colder and deeper, and its dark nights darker. Duke had been wounded in action. And that is the end of chapter 15. Come back tomorrow, and Aunt Nikki will bring you chapter number 16 that is entitled, No News, It's Awful. See you then.